Ladies and gents, welcome to TFI Cat Tips, and I'm going to give you a quick as I can overview of how to 3D print from Inventor. A couple of the tools that you've got in there, a couple of tips and tricks along the way. It's my first video diving into 3D print, and it's taken me a while to jump on board, but we're going balls deep. We're going balls deep, lads. Let's get started. The first if, the first if and but that you get with Inventor and 3D printing is that the 3D printing module in Inventor behaves differently based on whether you're working in a part or an assembly. If you try and send an assembly, an IAM file, to a 3D printer, you get a slightly different interface to what you do when you're working in a part file, but I'll cover that a little bit later on. But I guess in most instances, you're going to be wanting to print single parts rather than assembly, so that's where we'll start. So we'll open up this blade. This is one of the sample files, it's the top half of the scissors, the little dwarf, little elf scissors that it gives you out the box uh, with the sample files. And uh, we're going to try and send this to a 3D printer. I actually don't have a 3D printer on my desk. But that doesn't matter, that doesn't matter. We can still use the 3D print tools and see what we can do. And again, I could show you the 3D printing interface. I could show you the 3D printing software if I had a 3D printer. But it's probably going to be different to the one you've got. There's that many different 3D printers out there. I could show you mine, but it won't be the same as yours. So, how do you start 3D printing in Inventor? Right, well, you go to the Environments tab. And then in here, you've got a 3D print button. Now, this will launch the 3D print configuration environment. And it looks a little something like this. There you go. Right, the first thing you notice when you launch this is you get the wireframe outline of the 3D print boundary. So this is what area your 3D printer can actually print in. So if your model's too big for your 3D printer, it'll extend outside of this box. Anything outside of that box can't be printed. I'd like to think you know that, though. If you've, if you've got a 3D printer on your desk, you probably are well aware that you can't print outside of the box. Do you know what I mean? I would like to think that's common sense. Uh, but then the next question you've probably got in your mind is, well, how does Inventor know what 3D printer I've got? Is it talking to my printer? Is my printer telling it what size it is? How does it know? Well, there's a few things to play around with there. There's a few things to, to know. There's a tip that I need to give you. And uh, let's start with what 3D printers it's got out the box. First off is the Autodesk Ember printer. Obviously, Autodesk are going to they're going to want to promote their own 3D printer, and it's the Autodesk Ember. I say it's the Autodesk one. They've probably acquired some company and rebranded it as the Autodesk Ember, but hey, there's nothing wrong, there's nothing wrong with that, is there? Uh, but then if you select the drop-down list, you can go to other printers, and there's uh, there's quite a few in here, but I would suspect that these are the top-of-the-range expensive ones, and the likelihood is that the one that you've got isn't listed in here. I'm, I'm going to guess that in most cases, the one you've got, unless you're fortunate enough to have a replicator or an Ultimaker, which are the top-notch ones, uh, and if your name isn't Barnacles, then you probably don't have one of these. So what we need to do is, is we need to figure out how to get our 3D printer in here because we want to see our boundary in the part file so we know whether it'll fit in. So how do we do that? Well, that's a good place to start. How do we edit this list? Well, you can't right click on it. There's no right click option. So how do you get something in here? Right? Well, you want to cancel this and then you want to go to File Explorer. And then in File Explorer, in the address, you want to type in percent app data percent and press return uh, we're doing this in 2017 inventor 2017 i i've also done this in 2016 and it works fine anything beyond that i'm not sure i would suspect it does work because 2017 is the current release as of today that's what we're doing it in so once you're in this folder you want to go to autodesk you want to go to inventor 17 and then in here there should be an xml file that doesn't exist <laughs> what there should be an XML file that doesn't exist. Neil, what are you talking about? When you start configuring 3D printers, Inventor creates an XML file in this list, and that's the file we need to edit. So we need to we need to prompt Inventor to create this file. So you want to go back to Inventor, you want to go to other printers, just select any one uh, other than the Ember one, and then just tick all these three boxes and click OK. Go back to File Explorer, and you've now got a file called 3dprinterdescriptions.xml. Right, we're going to edit that file, but you need to do it with Inventor closed down. So we're going to shut down Inventor. I just say no, blah, 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 blah. And then you want to go back to that that file, 3D printer descriptions.xml, right click on it, and then you want to select edit. This is the list of all the 3D printers that we were just looking at. So there's the Autodesk Ember, there's the Dremel, there's the Replicator, etc., etc. So you want to go to the last line and you want to copy this to the clipboard. So you want to select the whole line, Control C, and you want to go to the end, press return. Control V. So you just want to paste a copy of that last line underneath itself and then press spacebar twice before that line just to line it up. Right, we need to give it a unique GUID. Uh, a, a unique what? Yeah, that's pretty much what I thought. 
<laughs> you want to go to um, you want to go to this website here called www.guidgen.com. Right, that brings up this page. Just click generate a new ID, and it'll just give you a random string of numbers. Select all of these. Copy that to the clipboard. Control C. Go back to Notepad. <laughs> I know it's a bit it's a bit fiddly, but it's it's literally what you've got to do. And then you want to put the cursor, highlight the last GUID because it's a duplicate of that one. Control V, paste it in there. Right. So that last line now has its own identifier. Once you've got that in, you want to come into the rest of the values and start changing them. So in this bit here, you want to put in the model name of your three D printer. I don't know what your three D printer is. There's hundreds of them. So you just want to type whatever that is in. So it could be up. Uh, that, that's the model of the one which we've got in the office and then the manufacturer is uh, P, I think the one is PP3D or something like that but let's just call it 3D printers are us that'll do right for technology I haven't researched this so I'm not entirely sure what technology is and what it means but there's two values in here it can be either FFF or extrusion to 3D printing experts that's probably quite obvious. And there'll be someone, I guarantee it, in the comments who knows exactly what this. And if I'm talking to you, if that's you, by all means, put a comment down below and let everyone know what FFF and extrusion is because I'm probably telling people to type something in here, which is wrong. But if you look at most of the options in here, it says extrusion. So all I did is went extrusion. And for the 3D printer I had in the office, that worked fine. And that could just be a coincidence. I don't know. I don't know, but whatever. Whatever, right. So you want to then go to the right, and then this bit is important. This is the depth, width, and height for your 3D printer internal space. So you want to go to your 3D printer website, so look at the sales brochure, the leaflet, whatever, for your 3D printer, and find out what its sizes are. What is its printable area? So for the one I have in the office, it was 140. This is in centimeter, uh, millimeters, sorry. 140 by 140 by 135. And that was the size that we were working with. And then I want to click File, Save, and then you're done with that XML file completely. Shut that down and then start Inventor back up. Go back into your IPT and then back into the 3D printing environment. And let's just check to make sure that that 3D printer we've added is actually in the list. Uh, so you want to click the drop down on here and then you want to go to other printers and what you should see is at the top of the list for me I think it's alphabetical yeah it is alphabetical so there's 3d printers are us and there's my printer with the depth width and height as I said it in the XML file now again unless your name's Barnacles the chances are you've only got one 3d printer so you want to always select that as your favorite your default printer and you want to use it in the current document when would you not if you've only got one 3d printer so you want to click OK and then that's pretty much it. That's it. So there you go. There's your boundaries inside your part document ready to manipulate your object ready for 3D printing. So that's the true boundaries now of the 3D printer. We're ready to go. So the rest of the tools in the environment are just to help you manipulate the object to get it in the right place. You might be printing more than one object in one run, for example. So what I'm not going to do is go through every single tick box and every single option because that would just go on forever. So I'm just going to very quickly show you a couple of the tools that you've got here. So the first one is the orientation, which is actually quite important. So at the moment, this uh, the, the blade sort of sitting side down. So we've got quite a lot of contact surface between this object and the, the floor or the bed of the 3D printer. So we want to minimize that surface because when you pick it off the 3D printer bed, you don't want too much material stuck to the bed. So what you can do is you can select orientation, set orientation, and you can just pick one of the faces on the... Uh, on the part and it'll flip the object based on that face that you select and there you go and you can click OK happy with that another thing you can do is you can set the position so it by default puts the object smack bang in the middle of the printing bed right so it's right in the middle of the cube well again if, you, if you're doing multiple objects in one run you might want to move this and get it out the way so you can stack objects next to each other so you can set position you can pick one of the, the walls of the 3D printer and then it'll snap the object to that wall and then you can put in an offset value here of say well I don't want it to print right up against the side glass wall of the 3D printer so you can put an offset value in a 5mm so I think Autodesk round of applause for Autodesk actually I think they've thought this through this ex that exact thing there is the type of thing that in some instances in the past Autodesk would have just completely forgot about and not put any thought into so it's qu it's quite good that they've thought about that there'll be things they've missed I've no doubt but that's it's helpful to have that in there 
And then you can also select a second wall. So you've moved it and snapped it against that wall. You can select a second wall. And uh, it's quite fiddly to pick the wall. Sometimes it's you can't pick it straight. You've got to pick it near the edge, which is a little bit fiddly, but it is what it is. And then you can put in another offset gap there. So that lets you snap it to the wall. And then maybe you've got multiple objects in here and you can move them around and stack them all accordingly. And you can click OK. Right, the other option is partition. This lets, this lets you slice the object. I guess, I, I can't think of any any real world examples where you'd use this, but maybe you've brought a part in from another third party CAD package and it's not quite come uh, correct. You need to just split it up a little bit and move it around a little bit. I don't know, I'm just, I'll show you what it does and then you can maybe relate that to something that you might do. So you would select partition, you can pick a face or a work plane and then it'll slice the object based on that plane. So you can see here, it's, it's almost like running a, it's like running a section view through it, but that bottom half will be one body and then the upper half will be a second body. So you can click okay on that. And then in the browser, you'll see you've got two solid bodies, solid two and solid one, top half and bottom half. So it's split it into two objects. What you can then do is use like, say for example, this object, this option here, direct edit. You can go direct edit. You can select instead of faces, you can pick solids and you can pick the top half and then because we've split it, you can move it around. Uh, you'd never for this part, you'd never do that, but it's just sort of highlighting what you can do with these two tools. So um, we'll just cancel that and do it because that is ridiculous. Another thing you can do with direct edit as well, because you can make sl very slight modeling changes to the part. Again, if you've got a part that's coming from another provider and you need to make a very quick edit to it, you can edit faces. So you select edit instead of solids, pick faces. You can pick one of the faces and then using the X, Y, and Z axes, you can just pull it around and it'll make very quick extrusions or cuts based on uh, where you drag the uh, the triad. So that lets you make quick changes, just little slight tweaks before you send it off to the 3D printer. So that's quite nice. That's quite nice. Okie dokie. Right, print options. There's a couple of things in here. I'm not going to go through all the options, but I would say the one of particular note is the source units, which uh, again, it depends what object, uh, which source the objects come from as to what units it comes in as but in most cases for me I'm always going to have it set to millimeters and then for the resolution again in most cases I'm going to want that set to high the only time that I can imagine you set it to low would be if you're just running a very very quick draft run and you maybe don't want to use as much ink you don't want it to take as long uh, but I, I like to do everything proper if it uses more you know filament if it uses more material fine I don't really care I want it to look its best at all times Right, and then we've got things like mesh display, where you can change how it, you can, you can have a look at the mesh of the object and all the polygons and whatnot. And then uh, Print Studio sends it off to Autodesk's own proprietary Print Studio, which I don't have. And that's pretty much it. That's all you've got for the 3D printing module. It's pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. And then you would select STL, and then that'll save that file based on all the configurations that you've done. It'll send that file to an STL file, which you can then import into whichever software package you use for your 3D printer. I'm not gonna show that bit because every 3D printing package is gonna be different. I won't have the 3D printer that you've got. So whatever I show you will not translate across to what you have. Uh, but you'd select STL file, you drop it on your desktop or wherever you wanna save it, and then that's your STL file ready to import into your 3D printer. So another thing you can do as well, uh, I'm just gonna exit this 3D printer, is uh, I was, saying at the start of the video that assemblies don't work as well as part files so what i'm going to do is open up the original full assembly that that blade came from now i'm going to go into the 3d printing environment and what you're going to notice is you don't get the full set of tools along the top when you're in an assembly you can save this out to an stl file so it will actually send this whole body out to an stl file to 3d print but you don't get the option to move it around the, the boundary of the 3d printer you don't get all those tools so what you can do if you do want all that functionality is just close the 3D print environment, go to the simplify tab and then simplif create a simplified part. And this will blend your entire assembly into one part and keep all the detail. Just click okay on that. You can change where it saves it and what it's called. But there you go. And that's now a part file IPT representation of the full assembly. You'll get varying results based on how big your assembly is and how complex it is. But pff, this one's not that complicated, so it's absolutely fine. So now that that's done, we're in the IPT, we can go to the Environments tab, we can go to 3D Print, and we've got the full object there, ready to be moved around within the boundaries of our 3D printer. Okay, that's pretty much it. That's, that's 3D printing. Yeah, thanks very much, guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Doodles! Go, go, go.
with you, babe. Go with you, babe. 